Hey guys, it's Joe from PocketNow.com. What would have happened if we would have skipped from desktop computers or laptop computers straight to smartphones? So we didn't even have the bigger versions of these computers, because really that's what a modern smartphone is. What kind of keyboard would we have put on a smartphone? Well, the guys at 8pen said it would look something like this. Let's go take a look. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a soft keyboard, a SIP, or in Android terms, an IME, called 8pen. Now, 8pen goes back and says, what would have happened if we were designing a keyboard for a mobile device and we weren't biased by keyboards that were on, well, originally typewriters? and then have been moved over to uh, desktop computers, laptops, and then, well, even eventually onto mobile devices themselves via a slide-out keyboard, and then, by extension, a little soft input panel, or that IME. Well, what would that have looked like? This is what they came up with. What it is, is it's four quadrants with a dot. And, I mean, that's as basic as it gets. What they've done is they've aligned all the letters on the keyboard around these rays, and they've arranged them such that the more frequently used ones are closer to the center and the less frequently we use ones are closer to the outside. And the way that you input text is you start in the middle and you move your finger into whatever quadrant your letter's in. So if I wanted an H that's down there, I'd move my finger down into that quadrant. But then I have to tell it, you know, what is it? Is it one of those guys or one of those guys? Well, to do that, if I want one of these letters, I move my finger out in a clockwise direction, and if I want one of those guys, I move my finger out in a counterclockwise, or in their videos, they call it an anti-clockwise direction. And I still have four letters to choose from, so how do I choose one of those? Well, I move my finger down in there, and I go counterclockwise, and I move it around the quadrants until I get the letter that I want. So because H is the second one out, I have to move down in here and move counterclockwise two quadrants, and then back to the dot to register that. So let's go ahead and do that with uh, the word hello. Let's just do hello, you know, because you know everybody likes hello world. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here. So there's T, there's H, now we're going to do an E, now we're going to do an L, now we're going to do another L, and we're lastly going to do an O, and there you go. You've got hello. Now, I can do that a lot faster when I'm not encumbered by doing it on camera here, and over time you're going to pick up speed as well. The problem with this entire methodology comes into play when you're trying to type something that you haven't used frequently. So let's say I'm try typing uh, an email here to Brandon. So let's do hello Brandon. So I'm going to come down here, and there's my B, so I'm going to go around that way, there's a B, and then, uh-oh, I don't know where R is. Okay, there it is. R, A, but where's N? Now I have to look all over underneath my finger without lifting my finger to find an N, and if I tip my device up just to, uh-oh, it rotated into landscape mode, and I have now lost not only my keyboard, but where I was in typing that, which is really, really a pain. So, that's one thing that they need to work on in this IME, and I don't know if an IME can tell the device not to rotate into landscape mode or not, but that, you may think that that's really a big stumbling block and, and you're never going to use it, but remember with a QWERTY keyboard or a Dvorak, you didn't know where the keys were to begin with, and you had to really practice, and you had to look, and your fingers were over those keys as well on, you know, a really physical keyboard. So this is kind of the same thing. It's going to take you a while to get used to the layout of where all of the letters are, but once you do that, your text input should really pick up and should be really fast. Now you'll notice that this isn't all of the letters. First of all, we've got a backspace up here. We've got a capitalized button right there. We have return and we have numbers and symbols. So it's got kind of all the things that you need in a keyboard, really. And they're all right there, easy for you to get. Now, if you want to try this on your Android, it should work on everything from 2.1 up. And it is available for you to purchase and download in the market. Now, notice I did say purchase. This is not a free keyboard. You do have to buy it. And it ended up running me right around a buck seventy or so uh, when I downloaded it. 
you can go ahead and download it, install it, try it out, see if you like it. It's got a really good tutorial to begin with. If you don't like it, remember you've got 24 hours from the time that you downloaded it for you to uninstall it, which will automatically give you a refund. But it's something neat, and it's really showing you what you can do to push the envelope and say what would happen if this is what was the form factor that we started with. Kind of a neat idea. I really have to give the developers credit for uh, coming up with such a radical concept that really is relatively fluid, but a little bit frustrating at times, simply because I haven't used it all that much. And, and when I say I haven't used it that much, this has been my keyboard for the last two days, and I have been forcing myself to use it for two days solid. So uh, it's not for lack of actually using it, it's just I've been using a keyboard now for, well, longer than I want to admit. So, if you would like to see similar keyboards such as this in the future, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our video channel, and leave us comments down below. So showing off what you can do with alternate keyboard entries, in this case the 8-pen keyboard for Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi.